So today was iPhone day and Apple announced a bunch of new products that I'm really excited to tell you about. So let's get right into it. So for months, people have been leaking things about the next gen iPhones. But to start out with the event, Apple actually announced the HomePod mini. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail regarding the mini, but the key points are it's much smaller and comes in two colors, a light and dark color. It has a three microphone array, touts a 360 degree sound. And lastly, with a new Siri update, HomePod mini will be able to send intercom messages to not only other HomePods, but also any other Apple device. This includes AirPods, Apple Watch, CarPlay, and of course, iPhones. Now the HomePod will be coming in at around $99. And to be honest, I think this is a little bit steep for a smart speaker. Sure, that it's a smaller design and the new technology with 360 degree sound is great, but Apple really is trying to directly compete with the likes of the Amazon Echo Dot and the Google Nest Mini. So for it to have such an increase in price of around $50, it's gonna be hard to get new people to switch from their existing smart home tech now that said, if new users who are just getting into the smart home game, they might actually see this as a very viable option given the price. However, time will tell how successful it really is. Moving on to iPhones, there was a ton of speculation on what features and models were going to look like this year. And today, Apple announced four new iPhone models. The iPhone mini starting at $699, the regular iPhone 12 at $799, the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max at $999 and $1099 respectively. Now, I will be most likely pre-ordering the 12 Pro Max for a review, so make sure to subscribe for that video. And speaking of pre-ordering, the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro are going to be available for pre-order October 16th, and the iPhone 12 mini and Pro Max will be available for pre-order on November 6th. Now, in terms of what these new iPhones have, every iPhone is featuring an all new design. Well, it's not really all new, it, it kind of is, Basically, the new design is basically very reminiscent of the iPhone 5S and the old SC. Now, personally, that was my favorite iPhone design, so I'm super excited that it's been brought back to the iPhone 12. Now, the iPhone 12 and the 12 mini are the exact same phones, just in different sizes. The 12 mini has an OLED screen coming in at 5.4 inches, and the iPhone 12 comes in at 6.1 inches. Both come in a variety of new colors, including white, black, blue, green, and product red, and every model of the new iPhone includes 5G support, which we will talk about a little bit more later. The new phones feature Apple's new A14 Bionic chip, which is the smallest chip we've seen in an iPhone yet, coming in at five nanometers. Apple's also touting a 16 core neural engine, which is double what we saw in the A13. Now there's a ton more specs to talk about here, but to keep it short, basically the new iPhone 12s are incredibly fast. There's going to be some incredible improvements in performance and gaming, but probably the biggest place you're going to see this is in battery life and image processing. Now the 12s feature two rear facing lenses, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel wide. And this is huge because now you're going to get the same quality performance out of each camera. In addition to this, every camera, including the front facing one is getting deep fusion support, which is going to make for much more detailed photos. Also because of the new A14 Bionic chip, there is much more power for machine learning processing. And we'll see if this have a direct impact in things like night mode and smart HDR3. Now, in terms of video, the iPhone 12s are the first phones capable of shooting and editing Dolby Vision HDR footage. And this is really cool, and I'm incredibly excited to see how this plays out in the real world. Now, the 12 and the 12 mini also feature a new, what Apple is calling XDR display with improved drop protection. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're getting a smaller notch. There is no high refresh rate option either. Unfortunately, this is something that people wanted, but in the grand scheme of things, it really won't make a big difference to most users. With the launch of the new iPhones, Apple also introduced MagSafe again, and the concept here is really cool. Basically, every new iPhone here has a magnetic coil built into the phone, which means new Apple accessories are going to snap directly to the phone. This includes wireless chargers, and this is actually huge. No longer do you have to fiddle with trying to find the specific spot for your charger. Now it's just going to snap directly to the phone. Apple also announced a new MagSafe charger that lets you wirelessly charge your phone and Apple Watch at the same time. Now, as they did with the Apple Watch Series 6, unfortunately, Apple has completely removed the 5 watt charger in the box and now only included is a USB-C to lightning cable. And finally, let's talk about 5G. Now, Apple spent a significant amount of time on stage talking about the improvements and the benefits of 5G. And to be honest, while it's cool seeing this technology being supported in these latest handsets, it's not as exciting as Apple made it out to be. Sure, 5G is going to mean faster download and upload speeds, which is going to make overall life easier, but I would have loved to see a reduced notch over 5G support. Again, that's my two cents. 5G is here and it's here to stay. It's definitely cool, just not as cool as Apple made it seem to be. 
Okay, so let's talk about the iPhone 12 Pro. So basically all of the improvements that we saw on the 12s are coming to the 12 Pro and Pro Max, but with a couple of key additions. The 12 Pros will feature the same 5G bands for amazing coverage. They also come in the more familiar colors, those being graphite, silver, gold, and a new color, Pacific Blue. The 12 Pro feature the same Super XDR displays that the 12s do, and they are getting a slight bump in size with the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max coming in at 6.1 inches and 6.7 inches respectively. Now the biggest update here is going to be the cameras. With that Pro name, you're getting a third telephoto 65mm camera, a much larger sensor which means better overall performance, a stabilized sensor which is really big here. This basically means the sensor is physically stabilized versus just the lens, and the LiDAR sensor for better autofocus, AR, and low light performance. Now with these updates, I want to highlight a few key things about the new camera system. First is going to be the new Pro RAW feature. So in the past, iPhones could shoot RAW photos with apps like Halide, but the problem is you lost out on all the cool smart HDR and deep fusion technology built into the stock camera app. Well now with the new image scaling processor, you can now shoot Pro RAW photos, which basically combines the best of both worlds, giving you smart HDR and deep fusion with the flexibility of RAW that lets you change and alter photos drastically. This is incredibly big for Apple and a much appreciated change. Now the next big update is going to be the 10-bit video recording. So for those of you who don't know, most everyday cameras shoot in what's called 8-bit. 8-bit depth is a color depth that basically equates to a sensor being able to take in about 16.7 million colors. And while that seems like a lot, 10-bit increases this to 1.07 billion colors, which means when you're editing video, you can get a much cleaner image with a lot more flexibility in post. Now for the average everyday user, this isn't a big deal, but for prosumers who are going to be using their iPhone for video, this change is huge. Now there's a ton of smaller updates to the cameras which I won't be going into today, but I'll leave links to Apple's press releases down below. Also, the iPhone 12 Pros will be getting the same Dolby Vision HDR support as the 12s. So what are my thoughts about the new lineup? Firstly, I appreciate the 5G edition, but I much would have preferred to see a slimmer notch or a change in Face ID. 5G is definitely the next marketable step here for Apple, but I can't help but feel a little bit disappointed. I am, however, incredibly excited for the new camera upgrades in the Pro model phones. As a creator, this is going to be huge for anyone who is moderately interested in filming videos or taking photos on their iPhone. Also, I really do appreciate Apple's wide variety of options when it comes to models and pricing. It really seems like they now have an iPhone for everyone. I think the $699 pricing of the iPhone 12 mini is great. Not only are you getting a larger screen, but you're also getting the latest engravements and improvements in performance. But if you can't afford the 12 mini, the SE is still a great option. However, I'm a little bit confused as to where the iPhone XR fits in this lineup. It feels like a budget option, but it's a generation older than the SE, and in terms of processing power and screen, it's not as good. So I probably wouldn't have to recommend this, and I would recommend the 12 over the XR. And lastly, as I already mentioned, the HomePod mini seems cool, but with a higher price point, I think it's going to be harder to move existing Amazon and Google users over to the new system. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to cover everything about the new products. So if you wanna see a more in-depth video, definitely let me know down below. Also, I'm probably going to be picking up just the 12 Pro Max, but if you wanna see coverage on maybe the iPhone 12 mini, let me know down below as well. If you like this video, you know what to do. And as always, until next time, peace.